Welcome back to Scripps News tonight. The CDC is ramping up efforts to protect people from RSV. Now, while people of any age can develop the highly contagious respiratory virus, infants and older adults tend to be more prone to catching it. And as a result, the CDC is releasing over 77,000 additional doses of an RSV vaccine for infants, specifically across the U.S. But top experts urge you to be as cautious as you can, whether vaccinated or not, as they warn of winter's triple threat, RSV, the flu, and COVID. They say that RSV is the biggest concern of the three as they've seen cases double in the past month in some regions. Now, vaccinations against RSV have been harder to get as new cases continue to rise and temperatures decline. So here's some symptoms to look out for. Common symptoms for all ages include fever, nasal congestion, cough and runny nose. And as for infants, be sure to look out for rapid breathing, belly breathing and nasal flaring. As for older adults, they tend to experience the common symptoms as well as decrease in appetite, sneezing and wheezing. Now we're in the season where viruses like RSV run amok. There are two game changing vaccines to help prevent severe sickness for RSV now, and people are having a hard time accessing both. So here to talk about why and what to do about it is Dr. Amar Awan, a physician and health contributor to Forbes.com. Thank you so much for joining us. And I let's break this down because we got to start with the many parents. They've already been ready to get a hold of the RSV shot for their babies, and they're hitting these roadblocks. The CDC, as I just mentioned, says it's increasing doses of this shot for the winter season. But I just I wonder, why does it feel like we're not ready? Well, I think we're not ready to be fully transparent, and I think it comes down to supply and demand. And, you know, the demand has been much greater than the supply. And I think manufacturers underestimated the demand that this would have, particularly with parents and children that need the RSV vaccine. Now, part of the issue is also that much of the Bifortis or the monoclonal antibody that's given to infants and some toddlers was reserved for the vaccine for children program, which predominantly uh, serves those that are uninsured and those on Medicaid. So private insurance companies have had less of a supply to give to their consumers. So that's why a lot of people are having difficulty getting this uh, specific treatment for their toddlers and their infants. Hmm. And it's just so interesting to me because, you know, we go through this global experience of the pandemic and see, you know, how our supply chain, you know, had holes in it when it came to developing. I mean, it was completely new um, you know, technology, if you will, and, you know, whether or not those lessons have been learned when it comes to something like this. But, you know, the CDC, in light of these issues with access to the RSV shot, specifically for babies, has encouraged uh, pregnant women to get vaccinated, you know, pass the immunity onto the baby. But there are also reports indicating on that front that there are challenges ranging from not finding it at pharmacies to insurers not covering the shot right away. And it's I read it's it's expensive. It's like 300 bucks or something like that. So what do you make of these issues when it comes to pregnant women? Well, I think it's disheartening, Lauren. Honestly, I think that's what it comes down to. I mean, when you consider that RSV is the number one cause for hospitalizations in infants, it can lead to up to 500 deaths in infants and children every year in America. Uh, these uh, vaccines aren't readily available. And, you know, a lot of, you know, doctor's offices don't carry them and private insurance companies uh, may not have them even for up to a year. They're not technically uh mandated to have these new vaccines once CDC approves them for up mm. to a year. So this is very disheartening and it's a problem. And another major obstacle is, is that, you know, pregnant women only have a short window to get this shot, you know, really in the third trimester from the 32 to 36 week mark during their pregnancy, they have about a month to get this shot. So that also compounds a problem and makes it very difficult to get this in a timely fashion. So very disheartening when you consider the public health impact for these vaccines and what they can mean and do for the public in preventing severe infection and illness. Right. And quickly here, I want to turn to older folks um, who are also more susceptible to RSV. They finally also have an RSV vaccine available, but only I think it's nearly 16 percent of Americans over 60 got one. Is this a, a messaging issue or is it the fact that this shot is a recommendation? I think it's a combination of things, Lauren. I, certainly it's messaging. A lot of people aren't even aware that there is a vaccine available for uh, RSV. We know now there's two vaccines that are very effective in preventing RSV infection. One is Arexv, which is manufactured by GSK. The other is Abrisvo, manufactured by Pfizer. But, you know, many individuals, pregnant females, even older individuals are not aware that this exists. So mm. uh, part of it is, you know, messaging. We must be better collectively at, you know, 
messaging and telling people about this. But also there's a lot of mistrust. There's a lot of public mistrust in science, in vaccines, dating back to the COVID-19 pandemic. To that point, let me interject here because we've got like a minute left and, and you're talking about mistrust. And I want to touch on this because the CDC advisory panel that looked into the RSV shot for older adults did express concerns about trial data so much so that they went from strongly recommending it to saying that people over 60, they, they may get the shot after having discussion with their doctors. Um, what was the concern and, and do you think that this has given medical providers pause in recommending it to older patients? Well, there's definitely some concerns and part of it has to do with the fact that, you know, some patients had a rare disease known as Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is uh, a, a rare disease that can result in muscle weakness, even paralysis. Some individuals, like 10 individuals who took a Rexv, which is one of the uh, vaccines for RSV, developed an irregular heart rhythm known as atrial fibrillation atrial fibrillation, which can then lead to blood clots in the body. So these are serious conditions that have given some physicians pause about recommending this to elders. Now, we know, obviously, you know, vaccines in general, the benefits outweigh the harm, and uh, it really should be individualized and tailored to a specific patient because every patient is unique. So there should be a conversation that occurs between a doctor and a patient as to whether or not they should get the vaccine or not. Dr. Omar Awan, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your insight. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.